One day. This is gonna be quite the one day. I don't have much time either. 11.26. It's not noon. We're making a swim bait. I drew this out just now. We're gonna put a joint right there and we're gonna have a fin coming off the back that moves too. I want a nice wide S pattern going on, but that fin on the back being loose is gonna hamper that a little bit, which is what I want. I want like a, a quicker, quicker S pattern. In my experience, that's what works. It's enough of a movement to get reaction strikes out of fish, but still it has a a big drawing power with the S action. I need to get started. I'm going fishing with my brother this evening and I'll be using this. I need to maintain confidence. And I will catch a fish with this. Next thing to do is to cut the joint for this bait. The best way to cut a V-joint like this that I've found, draw a little uh, square that's even around the whole body. I just use a speed square for that. And that is where the joint starts. Now you gotta make sure this is all oriented right. You want your bait to be facing nose down. You put it in the vise that way so you cut the joint the correct way. Little important step that I have messed up in the past might not be, need to be explained to some of you, but I needed it explained. I'm having some of the line that I drew exposed. That way I account for the width of this blade. And I use the cutoff end here to pinch the blade in place and saw down. But not going all the way through. Just going that far with it. So you can tell that those two cuts will meet up perfectly. You can just stick the saw blade in there and finish the cut when it's ready to do so. But now the bait can be carved out in one piece. A lot easier to do it that way. And you don't have to worry about cutting a clean joint after having all the rounded over edges and stuff. So for the tail piece on the back, to have enough room to wiggle back and forward. I marked out the section of material I need to remove for that. So, back into the vise, we're gonna cut that out. For this bait, I'm gonna keep the profile very chunky. I want a lot of wood left over to give me a good chance of having a lot of buoyancy. i mark that with a pen. When you're carving, your fingers always rub off the pencil and you have to remark. I'm staying away from the tailpiece back here. I'm gonna carve all of that separately. That's a small, easy to mess up little section of this bait. This is gonna be kind of a funky looking bait. Big piece back here, holding the fin in. Might look kinda of cool, or stupid, who knows. It's the way she goes usually. It's gonna look cool or it's gonna look stupid. There's very little middle ground here on YouTube. I guess in life too. Life lessons from a lure maker, valuable stuff. The more you remove from a piece like this, the weaker it's gonna be. And you have to realize you'll be sanding this as well, and that removes material. I'm really overstressing all of this. It's not that big of a deal. Just draw the lines where they need to be and don't cut past them. Time for some sanding. <laughs> Already on to putting some holes in this bait. Half inch bit, I'm gonna draw a big lead hole right up close to the joint right there because I want this to have a fast action and you know, laws of inertia and stuff. 
you got to put the weight next to the the part that you want to move a lot or else you're going to make like a lever that stops the bait from moving if you put the if you put the weight way at the head or at the at the tail you know can you tell like i know what i'm talking about and stuff yeah that's going to be a big chunk of lead right in the belly close to the joint what we're looking for i'm going to make two more one kind of up here and another one back here on this piece also close to the joint but i'm going to use a smaller bit quarter inch bit for this that is plenty of space for lead in this bait you know what fellas i'm going to cheat i'm just going to straight up cheat i don't care i'm going to use a pre-made tail fin it's just sitting there i wasn't going to use it on anything anyway i got some carving to do with it still, but the base of it where it meets with the body is still too wide. I gotta trim it down. But I'm not gonna not take advantage of this. I'm, I'm just gonna use this. Why would somebody feel so bad about this? Like This is just like a, a YouTube video, a challenge video that I made up. And no, nobody else even does it. Let's keep going. That's a pretty clean looking gill pattern. I like that. I'm going pretty deep with this carving. I don't know why. Looks good though. Probably because of the obnoxious looking uh, tail piece back here. It's kind of fitting that the gills protrude really far too. Those turned out beautifully. Let's finish cutting this joint. I got the lead pot heating up too right now. That way it's ready. Man, that joint ended up perfect. Perfectly centered. Beautiful. I'm gonna take the back piece back a little bit. Sand it back. That way this joint has more room to wiggle. Yeah, that'll do. I'm watching this edge right here and I'm not touching it to the sander. Like I'm looking around the corner and getting as close as I can but not touching that edge to the sander. And then I wanna bring all of this material down to this line. That's my technique. It doesn't look like much from this angle, like that's the only wobble I made. But when you set the pieces apart a little bit, it's a lot more room. You get way more freedom in this joint when you do that. So now you get your calipers, come up with a good measurement that you want your joint connections to be from the top and the bottom. I'm thinking five millimeters. You lock it there and you make the marks. And I poked them out, now I'm gonna drill them out using a 16th inch bit. And as you can see, that one goes right into the lead hole, which is fine. Nothing wrong with encasing something in lead for strength. Perfect. Okay, I need to weigh this bait with this tail fin in it. So I need to mark the center. What is this? A five. Okay, it's right there. So yeah, there's just going to be a big hole in this tail fin right where that dot is. I don't want to mark it too hard because I'll split this thing in half, but let's just drill it out. Oh, fail. Yeah, it's not quite a fail. I can glue this back together and drill it again. We'll save it. Come on, don't die on me. You're fine. It'll make it. Okay, there's a trick to this and you start with a smaller bit and you work your way up. You don't be a reckless moron and just drill with the biggest bit. You use some finesse. Yeah. <laughs> we can still glue it back. You know, this might be an ugly fin when we're done with this bait, but it'll be a fin. We did it.
So this fin is going to exist on the back of this bait as something that just flaps around. It's not going to bear any load. In other words, I'm trying to say, don't worry about the fact that this thing broke twice while I was working with it. We're still gonna use it and it's gonna be just fine. See, it'll be just fine. Nice and flappy. It's just a loop of wire right there. And there's another. The other one gets clamped in the vise. Use my other drill. It clamps it tighter. Hot, hot, hot. Clamp the other side. Pull tight. And there is a joint connection. Very small, that's ideal. You wanna keep these things small so the joint's not too far apart. That's like a perfect one right there. Okay. That's the bait put together. Just, uh, I pressed those joint connections that I just made into the pilot holes. It's not glued. Um, whoops, I wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> I need to seal this whole bait with super glue before I do that, so. One sec, got a shop towel handy. Let's seal this wood. I already glued in the line tie, by the way. I don't think I recorded that. This method of using super glue to seal the wood generally requires a lot of sanding when you're done, but it's still faster. Just getting a little bit of the sanding out of the way before I pour the lead. There. Put some lead in this thing. So those are the sized hooks I'll be using for this bait. Let's see how it sinks. It should, it should sink pretty fast and head first. Okay, that's very head first. Maybe I'm gonna drill some lead out. So that's a lot of lead I just drilled out. It really needed it. I think that's gonna be fine. When it hits the bottom, the tail piece still stays up. Yeah, I think that's gonna be fine. Let's go with that. This is gonna be an awesome little swim bait. You guys are gonna wish I made this for sale. I'm probably gonna catch so many fish. Famous last words. Time to paint. What to paint? What do we paint? This could be a creek chub, could do a baby bass, could do a small mouth. I just did perch. Sorry, I keep seeing things I wanna sand and reshape. We'll get to painting, I swear. We haven't done a bream pattern in a while, have we? Let's do a bluegill kind of thing, but like a really bluish, like light, a lot of white in it, some purple. Let's do something like that. I'm, I'm pretty convinced that's what I wanna do. Starting with white. Right when you spray something on it, you can notice, oh, I didn't sand that enough. So the colors that you don't want to be super strong, you need to apply first, because you're gonna be painting over them a lot. And one of the colors I don't want to be super strong on this bait is purple. So I'm gonna go with a fluorescent purple, and I'm going to apply it first to the flanks, or the shoulders of this bait. So I added some blue. It's actually wicked fastback green with some pearl gold flake inside of it, but it's just blue. And uh, it's not gonna be this blue on the finished bait. Cause right now I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow. Yeah, I'm gonna add some fluorescent yellow. That's gonna turn that kind of green, but it's still gonna be very light cause this is fluorescent with some hints of blue. So, you know, it's good to be painting stuff where if you're gonna look at it, you get confused. Cause that's usually what looks beautiful. Like that. That looks really good. Okay, next I have this stencil. I made this a long time ago, but it's a good one. Put this in my broken vise, and we're gonna make the bars on this bream paint scheme using a gray and being very careful with it. I feel like blasting this with some heat before. Just to make sure that's dry. Perfect, any more than that would be too much. Now we just have to replicate that. Okay, uh, I got scales, an orange belly, an ear, and paint the tail fan, and then this bait's done. Not done, but ready to clear coat. So I got it wrapped up, and now I'm gonna hold it like this, 
when I paint it, and I'm gonna cover that part with my thumb, the gills, and then just paint this stuff pearl white. Just gonna wait for those to dry and we'll do the reveal. Here we go. Scales. Let's finish the rest of this detail up. Okie dokie, gonna glue the eyeballs on. Ooh, that's bad. Saved it. Painted the tail fin fluorescent yellow. I thought that'd be a nice little accent, you know? We're gonna clear coat it as well. Very fluorescent. Just got those in the tank. It's 2.54, those will take a half hour. Then I drive out, I'm going to a lake first. Confidence is high. I bet I'll get a fish with this thing. It's not that big of a bait. It's just under five inches. And if it's got good action, we'll get a fish. Gorgeous. Let's get a glove on. You wanna glue these joint connections in, but you don't wanna get any glue inside of the loops. That can really stop the motion of the joint. It'll move in weird ways if, if you mess that up. Don't mess that up. If you get a little bit in there, it's fixable. It's not the end of your bait. All right, last step is to get that tail installed. This is my favorite one day build so far. So far. I don't even need to see how it works. I like this thing. I mean, that would be pretty sad if it didn't work good. It better work good. <laughs> it's too pretty to not work good. Where's my scale? It's a one ounce bait, 1.1 ounces. That's pretty light. I think I'm just gonna bring my normal bait caster then. Should I put a split ring on the nose? Let's start out without one. All right, see you at the lake. Look at that beauty. Did not think I was gonna have this spot to myself today on this 4th of July weekend, but I do. Awesome. First cast. It works amazingly. I don't know, man. Nothing. Is that a hard lure? One day. Yeah. Let's make a change, this spot sucks. Yeah. Well, the lake was bad. We're going to a creek now. I'm going back to what I know works because yesterday I was getting a lot of bites here. I know I'm fishing with a swim bait. This is creek fishing with a swim bait, so we're gonna get less hits, but I think we can still get some fish. Let's go. It's a northern hog sucker. Did you see it? Oh. Dang. Three smallmouth went after it. Not one of them hooked up. Dang it. 
We're not getting hookups. There's a large mouth that was just after it. You guys probably can't see that. Has a decent sized one. This bait doesn't get very, get very good hookups. I'll get lucky one of these times, I think. Are you getting any hits? No. I've had like five. <laughs> I can't hook them up. Man, I can slide this thing in exactly where it needs to be. A fish hits it, but I'll never hook up. It's, it's really annoying right now. Yeah, oh, it's a stick. Finally, I got a hook up. Don't lose it. It's official. Smallmouth, like four inch swim baits without tail fins because it fell off. I knew I should have made a better one, but it still works. Caught a smallmouth. This was a difficult fish to catch. Yeah, I've had dozens of hits. That was the first one that actually hooked up. Yeah, I got quite a few hooked up on a smaller rooster tail I had, so I got it snagged. Yeah. Whew. I was beginning to think I wasn't going to catch one. I'm a little surprised you did. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> the tail fin came off of this bait, and now the hookup's better. I really thought I was going to catch more than that. Dang it, Chip. Dang it. Oh well. Considering it's a swim bait. We really didn't do all that bad, you know. Creek fishing really beats the crap out of your lures. Like, look at all that paint chip. I threw this at so many rocks, lost the tail. I'll have to make a new one. Maybe fill in these paint chips and give it another clear coat. It's too pretty of a bait just to let be ruined like that, you know? That lure swam really good too. Like it swam exactly what I was going for. I wanted the S pattern, but I wanted to tighten up the S pattern and have it make like a cross between that gliding action and then an S action that a three piece swim bait gives you. That's exactly what it was in a sub five inch lure. That's, you know, trying not to toot my own horn, but I made that happen. Toot toot. Okay, I'm feeling better about myself. Made that bait, made that swim bait, caught a smallmouth with it same day. So I got some poison ivy to wash off of my legs and the nettles still burn. Me and Wes walked through some thickets to get back to the trail, but success. Again, that's what you guys get with this channel. Just success after success. Right, Chip? Oh, he punched me. Right. On that note, on to the next bait.